So in a car, the only speed that we really need to concern ourselves with is the speed of the car over the ground. If we're in an airplane, we're moving that airplane through an air mass, usually an air mass that's moving at varying densities and pressures. And the speed at which that air mass passes over the airplane can have different implications in terms of aerodynamics or structural implications. So we need to be able to talk about airspeed in terms of more than just the speed of the airplane over the ground. We need to be able to talk about airspeed in terms of the air mass that it's moving through or in terms of the instrument that's measuring it or in terms of the speed of sound. So we have several different types of airspeeds that we need to be familiar with. All right, let's start out with the simplest one first, ground speed. Ground speed is just the speed of the airplane moving over the ground or the speed of the airplane in relation to the ground. It has nothing to do with altitude or temperature or density or pressure or any sort of atmospheric conditions. It's just the speed of the airplane moving over the ground. So if we wanna calculate how long it will take us to get somewhere, right, using our distance equals speed times time, we need to use ground speed. So true airspeed is just the speed of the airplane as it moves through the air, or the speed of the airplane in relation to the air mass that it's flying through. So in still air, true airspeed is the same as ground speed because the ground's not moving either. So there's no difference in saying uh, the speed between the air mass and the airplane and the speed between the ground and the airplane if neither are moving. Now, if we have a headwind, then true airspeed is going to be greater than ground speed because the relative speed, the speed that the air moves past the airplane is going to be higher than the speed that the airplane moves over the ground because the, uh, because the relative air mass is moving in the opposite direction as the airplane. So it passes the airplane faster than the air passes the ground. If we have a tailwind, true airspeed is going to be less than ground speed because the air that's the relative speed between the air mass and the airplane is going to be less than the relative speed between the ground and the airplane because the air mass is moving in the same direction as the airplane. So the relative speed between these two are going is going to be less. Now another way of thinking about this is uh, is just to say that the headwind sort of slows down the airplane so ground speed is going to be less than true airspeed in a headwind and the tailwind speeds up the airplane so ground speed is going to be higher than true airspeed in a tailwind. So indicated airspeed is just the measured speed of the airplane as it moves through the air. It's the speed of the airplane in relation to the air mass that it's flying through according to the pitot tube. So the pitot tube measures airspeed using the pressure of the air and as altitude increases the pressure of the air decreases. So at a constant true airspeed the airplane is still going to be moving past these air molecules at the same speed. It's just that there are going to be there are fewer of them to enter the pitot tube. So the pitot tube reading, the indicated airspeed, is just going to be less than your than the and true airspeed, just because uh, it's just a limitation of the instrument. But true airspeed is the same because we're moving past these air molecules at the same speed, regardless of altitude. In this example, it's just that at a higher altitude there are fewer air, mo air molecules to enter the pitot tube. So indicated airspeed is less than true airspeed. So we could say that as altitude increases, indicated airspeed will decrease at a given true airspeed. Okay, so let's look at what that might look like again in still air. So if we're holding a constant true airspeed of 200 knots, so that is to say that we're moving past all of these air molecules at 200 knots. As we increase our altitude and the pressure of that air decreases, as we increase our altitude, there are gonna be fewer air molecules to enter the pitot tube. So that pitot tube reading will eventually, will eventually go down where it's lower than true airspeed, just because of the density of the air. But we're still moving at a constant true airspeed. We're still moving past those air molecules at the same speed. Now let's look at it the other way around because uh, we're going to be using indicated airspeed in our climb because that's what we see in our airspeed indicator. So if we want to maintain a constant indicated airspeed throughout our climb, that means that we need to be putting enough air molecules in that pitot tube to hold that same indicated airspeed even as the pressure of the air decreases with altitude. So as we increase altitude, we're going to be we're going to have to move 
past those air molecules even faster to keep that same indicated airspeed, for, to keep that indicated air, airspeed from decreasing because of the decreasing density. So if we hold a constant indicated airspeed in our climb, true airspeed will increase. Okay, so calibrated airspeed is just indicated airspeed or airspeed measured by the pitot tube corrected for what we'll call instrumentation or position errors. So anytime air flows around a body, it's going to change the uh, pressure of the air, the speed of the air in different ways. So ideally, the pitot tube would be measuring the free flow of the air uninterrupted by the airfoil or skin friction or angle of attack or flap setting or anything like that. But unfortunately, it's not possible to completely avoid the interference of those things. So calibrated airspeed just basically corrects for any error caused by the changing of the airflow from other parts of the airplane. So this is usually no more than a couple knots. And uh, it's most prevalent at slow air speeds, low altitudes, like when we have the flaps out, things like that. Um, but it's not that important to uh, where you're, you're going to notice a difference. It's just important to know the definition of this and that this, this, these errors can exist. Okay, so as airplanes uh, fly at higher altitudes and higher air speeds, uh, the airflow and the airspeed approaches the speed of sound. And when airflow approaches the speed of sound, it behaves a little differently. Uh, compressibility changes and things like that, things that are important to keep the airplane in a safe uh, maneuver, uh, within safe maneuvering margins. So for this reason, at high altitudes and high airspeeds, we use Mach number to measure uh, the aircraft's airspeed. So Mach number is just the ratio of our true airspeed to the speed of sound. So if uh, we're at Mach 1, then that means that our true airspeed is at the speed of sound. If we're at Mach 7.0, that means our true airspeed is 70% of the speed of sound. So it's just a way of saying how close we are to the speed of sound. So the speed of sound is a function of temperature. So as temperature decreases, speed of sound also decreases. Now, as altitude increases, air temperature decreases. So therefore, as altitude increases, speed of sound decreases. So speed of sound decreases with altitude. So if our Mach number is how close we are to the speed of sound, and as we get higher, speed of sound gets lower, then we're going to get closer to the speed of sound if we hold a constant true airspeed. So at a constant true airspeed, Mach number increases. So let's look at this the other way. What if we hold a constant Mach number in a climb? If we hold a constant Mach number, that means we're holding a constant percentage of the speed of sound, which is decreasing with altitude. So for example, if we're holding Mach 7.0 as we climb, that means we're holding 70% of the speed of sound, which is decreasing. We're holding 70% of a decreasing number. So 70, if we, if we, our true airspeed is 70% of a decreasing number, that means as we climb at a constant Mach, our true airspeed is going to decrease. So at a constant Mach in a climb, true airspeed decreases.